Hello and welcome to Respiratory Puzzle. This is the first in a series of puzzles and cases we're going to take a look at in order to help you to provide better care for your patients. Let's go ahead and get started with case one. Ms. Davis was admitted following an acute stroke. She is alert but has left-sided weakness and is having difficulty swallowing. This morning, she is complaining of shortness of breath and has scattered rowels throughout her lung fields. The most likely cause for Ms. Davis's distress is. Let's take a moment and think about what the most likely cause for Ms. Davis's distress would be. Well, if you guessed B, aspiration, you would be correct. So let's take a look at this case and see what our red flags were that might clue us in that this is aspiration versus something else. First of all, so this morning she's complaining of shortness of breath. So this is a sudden onset of an acute problem. She has scattered rawls throughout her lung fields. In most cases, if your patient is developing some rawls in their lungs, it's going to form from the bases up. So when we're talking about having heart failure or even neurogenic pulmonary edema, we're talking about moving from the bases up. Her history is, and the reason why she's there, is an acute stroke. She has alert but she has difficulty swallowing. That is our real red flag. So if we're looking for a clue in what is going on with Ms. Davis, what's happening here is difficulty swallowing, and that is our big clue toward aspiration. So our keys to early detection will be look for patients who have a change in mental status. Those patients, for example, in this case here, with an acute stroke, left-sided weakness, difficulty swallowing, subjective dyspnea, now again, difficulty swallowing, that was in our case, subjective dyspnea, and then rowels in the bases. Now in this case here, we had rowels scattered throughout the lungs. So we're not going to rule out aspiration because of that, especially since we have that acute change in mental status. Our prompt action will be protect the airway. So let's get the patient's head of the bed up. Let's watch what we're doing when we're giving the patient fluids and food, etc., because she's having difficulty swallowing. Maintain oxygenation, again, with positioning, coughing, and deep breathing. Now, you, we talk about this as being an intervention, but when you look at the patients that you care for, how often are they really coughing and deep breathing? We go in and we ask them, are you using your incentive spirometer? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm using it. You know, right. Well, they may not be using it enough in order to maintain those airways. We have to know when to initiate oxygen therapy. And in most cases now, the recommendations are that we use oxygen when the patient is hypoxic. So it's no longer that we use prophylactic oxygen in all of our patients, but we wait until we see that the patient actually needs it, that there is a desaturation that is occurring. So depending upon your patient's other previous history, we may initiate oxygen therapy sooner or later uh, depending upon the oxygen saturation. Watch for changes in neurologic status. And then should we be using antibiotics? Remember that aspiration is different than aspiration pneumonia. In aspiration, we have a chemical burn that is occurring to the lung versus aspiration pneumonia where we actually have an infection. Now, in many cases, we will give antibiotics anyway, prophylactically, to try to prevent secondary infection from occurring. So our takeaways are aspiration risks, the change in neurostatus, that's our big key there, supine positioning. So the change in neurostatus, we wanna get that head of the bed up to try to protect those lungs. Now, if you take a look at our picture here, and our picture is uh, uh, trying to show the anatomically correct 
uh, position of our trachea and our bronchi uh, when we're going down into the right bronchus. So the right bronchus is a little bit straighter, shorter than the left, and therefore the right lung is going to be more prone to having an injury. Again, remember aspiration is a chemical injury to the lung caused by those stomach contents coming back up, going into the lung, burning the lung, and then causing more of an ARDS type of a look than anything else. Aspiration pneumonia is an infection of the lung, but that chemical injury that occurred to the lung could make the lung prone to becoming infected and then having aspiration pneumonia. So in some cases, I think you're going to see we're going to be giving antibiotics, even though it's just an aspiration and we don't actually have a bacterial infection. In other cases, they may just treat the patient for that chemical injury, which would be preventing additional chemical injuries to the lung and supportive care. Either can lead to ARDS. Thanks for joining me for our first puzzle, Respiratory Puzzle Case 1. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, bye now.